Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Mi 11X, the Poco F3 and also known as the Redmi K40. I keep saying this but it's three different names and one device. Now recently we did a first impressions video of Pixel Experience and Pixel Experience Plus official on this wonderful phone since then i have been continuously using this on my personal phone that is the mi 11x and i thought this calls for a complete review including what is buggy and can you use this as a daily or not and we will be doing this based on our five point rom review system now we are not giving you points over here but we'll be going in a sequence and i'll show you how we are going to do that but before we get into all of that if you haven't already please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time i upload a video in the description of each video you will find a link to our telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other so join us there last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is kalash let's get going Alright, reviewing a complete ROM is sort of a responsibility and that is the reason I will try to get it as detailed and as right I can. So this video might be 10 to 15 minutes, so please bear with me. We have some things that we have defined. The first section is the ROM look and feel, then we have performance and gaming, we have camera, we have essentials, we have verdict. The only small change over here is when we talk about gaming, there will be a dedicated video coming testing the gaming performance of this ROM with the built-in kernel on BGMI and Call of Duty Mobile. So wait for that video. For now, let's talk about the first category that is the ROM look and feel in which the first thing that we will talk about is the launcher look and customization. Now when you talk about the launcher look and customization the first thing that comes to my mind is how good does the launcher look when the ROM boots for the first time and to me the pure Android look looks really really well and if you click over here you have styles and wallpapers now that calls for customization. So if you go to style over here you do have a lot of predefined themes with a lot of good accent colors and stuff and you do have quite a large amount of collection for the wallpapers and you can define your grids as well so the launcher look and customization on pixel experience for me for a daily driver is pretty decent now moving on we talk about notification tiles and the google feed now to the left now google feed is not a feature it's it's basically a necessity at least for me who reads a lot of news just from here and what matters for me is the hundreds of you know at least tens of times in a day when i move to google feed and when i scroll here like this i should not see any stutters now most of the time i have not experienced any issues with the google feed so bravo there to this particular rom now moving on we will talk about the quick tiles now the quick tiles work just fine you have the squircle icon pack or the icon shape and they are pretty much there and almost everything is available in quick tiles so a pretty neat addition to the quick tiles or quick setting styles or whatever you want to call it now the next thing that we're going to talk about is something that is important to most of us and that is the ui smoothness and jitter now if you have seen my initial impressions video i really really praised the smoothness of this particular rom because i was coming from mi ui and you know just just look at the icons how subtle how smooth how quick they are the google feed the status bar notification drawer even if you go to settings over here it works just fine it is fast it is smooth and i have not experienced any major jitter or stutters and stuff like that so from that point of view it is taken care of you don't need to worry about that now one important aspect theme engine and customization now because this is pixel experience apart from this particular option over here styles and wallpapers you don't really have a lot of customization but for me if i'm going to use a phone as a daily driver with a minimalistic rom like pixel experience or pixel experience plus this is pretty good i don't really have a problem now the next section is performance in which we will talk about the throttle the geekbench score and we will also talk about the antutu score so let's talk about the cpu throttle test first all right now this is where i have a slight problem if you remember i did not share the scores of benchmarks in my initial impressions but if you look over here there is something definitely wrong 
first of all i don't have the option of thermal profiles so you know i made sure that the phone was switched off for 10 to 15 minutes it was on flight mode no notifications no interruption although the device did not throttle it just throttled to 95 percent of its peak performance which is really really good but if you look at the score 133,983 gips now that's extremely low if i did something wrong or not i don't know because i tried this test two to three times in different situations and all the time i got the same result so you can run the cpu throttle test for 15 minutes and let me know your score there if i'm doing something wrong let's talk about geekbench over here all right now if you look at this trend over here on the 18th of August, we had the score 942838. Now that's how a Snapdragon 870 is supposed to perform. If you look at today's runs over here, I've had this wrong since yesterday. So today morning 4531854. Again, I ran it 4581887. And you do see there is a difference of one hour and one minutes in between, which means I didn't even push it back to back to get these low scores. So I don't really know what is going wrong with this kernel or what is wrong with the benchmarks in this particular ROM, but the scores are pretty, pretty low. Now, because we got low scores in Geekbench and the CPU throttle test, we didn't really run Antutu to benchmark. But if you ask me, overall, you know, I've not tried gaming yet. The gaming review is yet to be shot. But overall, if you talk about the performance, the experience of the UI, things like moving here and there, it's absolutely fine. I have not had any issues. Now, if you ask me about the camera situation, well, with all the custom ROMs, I'm not going to divulge into a lot of details when it comes to the camera because you are supposed to install Gcam on this. ANX camera is working. Somebody got it working partially, but even in that, the 48 megapixel mode is not working. The ultra wide camera is not working. So I didn't even feel that it was worth a try because most of the important features that I would need in the MIUI camera app are not working. And on top of that, you need to have Majisk to flash. It's like a Majisk module combo stuff. So if you want a decent camera, go to the photography group or go to the main Mi 11X group and look for the right XML and the right Gcam version. I'm pretty sure the sensors on this device will serve you the purpose. So no comments on the camera quality there because it's really, really not that dependent on the ROM. Now we talk about the important part, which is very, very essential when it comes to a ROM review. We are talking about the essentials, network, Wi-Fi and call drops. Now, I did not have any call drops, okay? The network has been just fine for me, although I do stay in a good network area. You do get the LTE plus signal over here. So we can actually go ahead and do a internet speed test over here. There you go. Okay, so not only it so shows LTE plus, but it is giving me pretty decent speeds. Now, remember, this is around six o'clock, 5.30 to six in the evening, and I stay in a crowded area. So it is pretty peak for internet usage and still we are getting good download. And yeah, we are getting pretty good download speeds. It's not testing the upload. Let's leave it alone. So the network, the Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz has been absolutely fine. I've not had any issues with the carrier services. Now, the next important aspect that we are going to talk about is the battery and charging. Now, the battery backup for me has been sort of there. Now, I did tell you in one of the other videos for Mi 11X that overall as a device, I'm not really that happy when it comes to the battery life. Let me show you a screenshot here real quick. Okay, now this was taken today when the phone was at 1% battery. And as you can see over here, I charged this phone 18 hours back. So I used it for 18 hours. And these are the things that I've been using because I was working, of course, and I was not playing games. And you do see that the screen usage since full charge was two hours and 46 minutes. And the estimate of this ROM says that the full charge lasts about 15 hours and 30 minutes. So for me, that is not excellent battery life. What is good is the charging. So, you know, the charging works really, really well. The fast charging works absolutely fine. The only bug that I found is on the lock screen, it shows that it is charging slowly. So you can ignore that. If you check with anything like Accu battery or something, it does charge just fine. But, you know, maybe this was the first charge cycle. If we look at the battery cycle right now, like the battery percentage, we are at 84. So we've used the screen for one hour. Okay. And if we go to the battery usage, we have been on battery for three hours. So by that logic, it should give me around four to five hours of screen on time across, I don't know, maybe 15 to 20 hours. So it can definitely get you through a day's time, but 
overall as a device Mi 11X for me in terms of battery hasn't been that great especially when you compare it to the Poco X3 Pro or the Redmi K20 Pro. Now the last few bits before we actually close this complete review of Pixel Experience for the Mi 11X. Safety net passes out of the box. Wide while L1 works absolutely fine. Fingerprint works always. So these three areas, I don't have any problems. If you want to watch HD content, bam, it works just fine. If you want to check, you know, you want to use banking application, you're good to go. Fingerprint scanner works absolutely fine, just like stock. The only bug that I found might be a deal breaker for you. If you are a BGMI player, the mic doesn't work in games. Basically, when you connect wired earphones, I was not able to get the mic working. So that is sort of a bug. And as far as updates is concerned, now that we have Pixel Experience official, we should be getting relevantly, you know, frequent updates. So all in all, if you ask me, Pixel Experience for you as an initial release is a splendid build. You can use it as a daily driver. Just go ahead and install Gcam and the XML of your choice and you should be good to go. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this complete review. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.